Hello everybody. Welcome to Greg's Beer Reviews today. Let's take a walk and go see what's in the fridge today. Hello everybody, thanks for stopping by Grace Beer Reviews today. Today's beer, another one from Dogfish Head. I've had this one for quite a while too, guys. I mean, when I bought these a couple years ago, they were monster beers. 10, 11, 12 percent beers. And, and I wasn't a big fan of the big boozy, big alcohol ABV beers back then. So uh, I just stuck them in the fridge and said, oh, we'll do these in a couple of years. And now's the time. So this beer was bottled on, oh... 052110. So this beer is right at three years old. So uh, hopefully the, the alcohol has mellowed down a little bit and it's not quite as boozy as it would have been if I'd have popped the top on it when I got it. So with that being said, this is a malt beverage aged in Palo Santo wood. And what Palo Santo wood is, guys. Uh, let me give you the commercial description. Big brown ale aged on Palo Santo wood from Paraguay. This beer is 12% ABV, highly roasted and malty brown aged brown ale aged on the wood of the Palo Santo tree from Paraguay. Palo Santo means holy tree, and it is and its wood has been used in South American wine making communities. We were lucky enough to get our hands on 20 blocks of the super dense wood. And, and was added to the aging tank after fermentation. So this beer, I've had it three years, and it's uh, it's been aged in a wooden tank, and it's been aged in Greg's, one of Greg's fridges downstairs for three years. So it's been double aged. What do you think about that, guys? Uh, the ABV, like I said, is 12%, and the, it is an American brown ale. I don't think I've had any brown ales with that big of an ABV. I do like a brown ale, but I don't like a boozy brown ale. So we'll see where this one ends up. Uh, we'll say it has some notes here from uh, uh, Beer Advocate. It says, an unfiltered, unfettered, unprecedented, 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 uh, I can't I can't pronounce it. Unprecedented brown ale aged in handmade wooden brewing vessels. The caramel and vanilla complexity unique to this beer comes from the exotic Paraguayan Palo Santo wood from which these tanks were crafted. And I told you it meant holy tree and it's been used in the South American wine industry for a while. So I don't think there's anything else we need to talk about. Dogfish, of course they're out of Milton, Delaware. And the food pairings for this in the cuisine is barbecue. The cheeses are earthy, Camembert, Fontina, your nutty cheeses, Asiago, Colby, Parmesan. And the general, uh, the, the uh, beef for this is beef, beef is all it says there. Let's see what else. Uh, right beer says it is. If there's any kind of meat in, no, nothing else is said on this for the brown ale. So, other than being a big, 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 big beer at 12%. I mean, this beer would normally, a brown ale usually goes with just about everything. But being a big, super, I don't, I don't want to say boozy, because I don't know if it's going to be boozy or not, but 12% leads me to think it may be just a little boozy. That's why I've settled it for three years, so it won't be quite as boozy. So we'll see where this one ends up. And of course, uh, it says here uh, at 12%, it can be settled for extended periods of time. So we've settled this one for about three years. Let's get the cap off of it and see if it's as boozy. We're going to go down the center on this one. What do you think, guys? Well, it almost like a stout, but it's a rich red color coming out of the bottle. So we'll see if there's any light coming through it. Down the center pour, got about a half a finger of head on that 12% beer, guys. Over into the light, I'm not giving any at all. Pouring out of the bottle, it looked like it had a red ruby color to it. And it may, but to the glass. And I am not giving any light whatsoever. 
maybe just a hint around the outside edges, but I can't verify that. I am not seeing it. So, black, black, black. And that head that poured is just barely covering the top of the beer now, guys. So it dissipated very, very quickly. A lot of these, once you get to 12%, it usually don't pour a very big head, and if it pours any at all, it dissipates very, very quickly. So uh, that's just a big alcohol characteristic, as far as I'm concerned. So let's get a nose on it. Oh, I am getting caramel and vanilla. Not so much coconut, usually when we get from the oak uh, aged versions of beers, but very subdued. The alcohol is there, though. I mean, this is right out of the fridge, and I am getting some of the alcohol. It's 12%, though. It has a sweet... It has a sweet smell, but the alcohol is is a little more intense than I was hoping it was going to be. Well, it's 12%, and I know it's 12%, so I'm not expecting a 6% beer. And I will grade it accordingly. Cheers, everybody. I get to that certain 12% and I get a little twinge right here when I drink it. Tightens up my jaw muscle right there. Definitely still a little boozy, but I was expecting that. It has mellowed out, I'm sure, tremendously over the three years it's been sitting downstairs in the fridge. I am getting some some dark fruit, figs, dates, raisins, a little caramel, a lot of booze. This is definitely a sipper. The booziness on these big beers is the biggest deterrent why I do not do these beers fresh. Once it gets to 10%, once I see that it is above 10%, unless it's some kind of Russian Imperial Stout or something like that, anything else, I'm going, ooh, that's going to be boozy, so let's cellar that. And I'm not, like I told you guys, I'm not a big fan of cellaring IPAs or double IPAs or anything that's hot forward, but I have cellared a few of them, and like I said, the other day we did, we did another one of these uh, dogfish beers that I've had in the fridge for two and a half years, and... That helps it. When you sell a beer for two, three, five years when it's 10, 11, 12 percent, that's going to knock some of that booziness down, usually. Now, I did a dogfish head, their body wine, and I'd had it for a couple of years, and it was, it still, it was just ultra boozy. So, that beer could probably could have sell another five, maybe even ten years. I thought my body wine that I did four years ago was better than what I did from them so they're known as a dark beer specialist and that wasn't quite a dark beer so we're not gonna we're not gonna hack on them too bad but they're but their milk stouts and and, and their darker beers are, are awesome dark fish head sam caligone uh, does a lot of different stuff he's out of the box here and out of the box there and out of the box everywhere and they do a lot of just bizarre beers and I mean, it's hard to tell how many different beers. I bet that guy's done 100, 200 different kind of beers since he's been doing, uh, since he's been brewing. So, but not afraid to step out of the box and do something different. And I applaud him for that. Sometimes they're winners, sometimes they're not. Sometimes they're mediocre because beer is subjective. What I'm going to love or hate, you're going to love or hate. So if I love it, you may love it, you may hate it, and vice versa. So, beers and taste for beers is subjective. If I was going from Budweiser to this, this would be a drain pour. Garen, freaking tea it. I wouldn't be able to, my palate would not be able to take this. Or if you're drinking Coors Light or Miller and somebody pours you one of these, it's going to make you gag. 
because you're not going to be able to handle the alcohol and the taste that goes with it. And a lot of people, they look at that beer and, oh, that's a dark beer, I can't drink that. Well, yeah, maybe not, but you know, you can't judge it by looking at it. It may be 4% or it may be 12%. So don't judge it. Don't be afraid of the dark. Don't look at the beer and say, well, I can't drink that. It's a dark beer. Well, why is that? Well, it's, it's, it's too boozy. Well, that may not be the case. I mean, it may be a 4% dark beer. And, or an 8% dark beer, or a 12% dark beer. Don't judge a beer by its color. Give it a taste. It's, it's a decent beer, guys. I think this is going to probably be an A beer, but I don't think it's going to get to 10, just because of the booziness. And that's just me. I mean, you may think, oh my God, this is the best thing I've ever had. And I know for a fact that aging this for three years has helped it. So guys, we're going to let it warm up. It's 40 degrees right out of the fridge. I don't want this to be a 20 minute video. And it may be a 10 minute. I'm going to let the other half taste this. I'm going to come back. We'll do the final chug on this one. I believe it's a winner, guys. It's a definitely, I think it's definitely going to be an A beer. So we're going to let it warm up. See how boozy it gets. Be right back. Alright guys, I'm back. I just have a left here. I'm impressed with this. Other than now it's warmed up, being a little boozy, well, that's 12%. I mean, if you're expecting a 6% or a 7% beer, it's not here. I mean, this this is a 12% beer, whether it's fresh or it's 2, 3, 5 years old. Just remember that. I mean, it's, 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 it's not going to go completely away, no matter how long you age it. It's, it's going to mellow out a little bit, but it's not going to go completely away. Not at 12%. I mean, it's, it, is, it is a wonderful beer. I don't know if I could have took it fresh. I'm glad I sold it for three years. So, guys, I don't know. Chocolate coffee. Not a lot of coffee, but dark fruit. Vanilla. I mean, it's it's got a whole. It's a very complex beer, but it's very easy drinking. Now that it's been cellar for three years, as long as you know that you're drinking a 12% beer, and I mean, if you're expecting Miller Lite, don't even pick it up. Don't even pick it up. So, guys, I like this beer. Uh, I'm gonna give it a nine out of ten. I think it's that good. I enjoyed it. I am really. I really enjoyed it. Great beer has this at 99 overall and 98 the style. So those numbers don't get too much more impressive than that. And Beer Advocate has 93, which is in their exceptional range. So you don't see Beer Advocate come up to the 93 scale unless it's a decent beer. And this is a decent beer. If you see this beer, pick it up. If you don't like the booziness of a big beer like this, like I don't, sell it for a couple years. Two, three, five, whatever it takes to make you happy. Buy a six pack of it. Try one, two years, three years, four years, five years, ten years, whatever it takes. To let me know what you think of it. If you've had this one, give me some comments back on this one. Whether you like it, didn't like it, too boozy. It was awesome. Best thing you ever had. Uh, it was decent. I'm glad I sold it as long as I did on this one. I don't think I could have took it fresh. Luna, I, I may end up buying another one of these later on and see. As my palate develops a little bit more, the, 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 the more I have and, and the more my palate gets experienced with these bigger beers, the easier they become to drink, especially once they've been cellared as long as this has, where they have a chance to mellow out a little bit. So, guys, with that being said, uh, give me some comments back on this and whether you like it. Like I said, the beer advocate has 93, which is their exceptional range, and Dogfish is 99 and 98, and I'm going to give it a 9 out of 10. So, let me know what you think of it. As always, rate, comment, subscribe, and let's go see what's in the fridge tomorrow. Join me then. See you, everybody.